to experience action like you've never heard it before. Action sports, celebrities, badasses, and massive interviews. All coming to you from the Polaris Razor Studio. This is Jim Beaver's Project Action, exclusively on Podcast One. Welcome to Project Action on Podcast One. Jim Beaver here, locked and loaded with... uh... What I would say is uh, probably one of our, our biggest episodes in uh, in probably a few months. Uh, my good friend, Toby Price. Yes, you know Toby, Red Bull athlete, one of the greatest motorcycle dr- riders on the planet. You know, multi-time Dakar winner. Uh, you know, he races trophy trucks. He races pretty much anything he can. But uh, Toby Price uh, in the States from Australia, I was able to catch up with him this week. Uh, he was out at the Best of the Desert, Parker 425, wheeling a trophy truck. And uh, it's been a couple of years since I've caught up with Toby. And I got to tell you, anytime you have Toby Price, it does not disappoint. The boy brings it in an interview and uh, always fun catching up with uh, somebody that I consider a, a very, very good friend of mine. So Toby Price on the show this week and uh, it is definitely definitely going to be a good one not only that but we've got my good friend dave mason with bet online he's going to be on the show as well bet online obviously we got the super bowl this week it's going to be a big week for our friends and partners over there at bet online so we got to get dave mason in here we we kind of talk some of that ufc mcgregor and cowboy cerrone uh talk about uh, a little bit about uh, some of the sports coming up but mainly about the super bowl and all things Super Bowl this weekend with Dave, and uh, you know he may get a few tips on uh, on maybe where to lay your money down at Bet Online, and don't forget use that promo code Podcast One. It's going to get you a fifty percent sign up bonus over there at Bet Online. But um, yeah, Dave Mason on the show, and uh, you know it's uh, definitely going to be good. I do want to uh, kind of open and uh, thoughts this week in the sports world. Obviously, we don't care, cover stick and ball sports too much. Um, you know, we're all over the grid with this show, but. Uh, Man, it's uh, it's really, really a tough week. Uh, you know, Kobe Bryant passing away in a tragic accident. And uh, I know Dave and I will probably get into talking about that. But, uh, man, just a, just a tough deal. I know we got a lot of... Uh, a lot of listeners in the Los Angeles area. I'm sure uh, the entire, uh, you know, the entire city is uh, is more than lost right now. And I just, just got to say, man, it, more and more it comes out about this. Just a, a tragic, tragic thing. So thoughts with all the families, uh, you know, that, that have been affected by this. And uh, definitely uh, uh, thinking of you guys. So, yeah, we are uh, going to get rolling here, though. It's a massive show. Two guests, Toby Price, Dave Mason. Uh, it is going to be a good one. want to ask you guys, though, if you haven't already, please go to iTunes or it's called Apple Podcast. Now, I keep saying iTunes. It's called Apple Podcast. Smash that subscribe button. It helps us out a ton. You don't realize how much it helps us out. And please leave a rating or a, and a review. Ratings for sure. If you want to take the time to write a quick review, if you leave your Twitter, Instagram, at username in the body of the review, when I see it, I will follow you back on social media. My promise to you. And, uh, you know, um, speaking of social media, it's at Jim Beaver 15. Yeah. Give me a follow. Let me know what you like about the show, what you hate about the show. And, uh, you know, who'd you like to hear on air? And if you got any questions, comments, we do Q and a episodes every once in a while. We probably need to do one of those here again soon. I've got quite the bank of uh, questions to answer, but, uh, yeah, um, throw those my way. And, uh, maybe next week we'll do a Q and a episode. Uh, I don't know. That sounds about good, but yeah, we're just getting rolling here, man. Hit me up on social media. And now uh, before we get to Toby Price, though i want to tell you about a couple of our amazing partners here on project action and uh you know it is a massive massive week like we said before and it is super bowl week and uh you know what it is the biggest game of the year it's kansas city san francisco visit our good friends and exclusive partner of podcast one bet online take advantages of the best bonuses in the business sign up for a free account and make sure and use the promo code podcast one and get a 50 percent sign up bonus you know also in addition to the super bowl we got what houston at utah we got boston and miami clippers at lakers utah at denver philly at boston portland at the lakers and new orleans at houston massive games in the nba college basketball man we are on the hunt for you know march madness uh west virginia and texas tech kentucky at auburn illinois at iowa some big college basketball games you know what you want to get in on it visit betonline.ag and don't forget use that promo code podcast one it's going to get you a 50 percent sign up bonus bet online your online sports book experts and do you rent or own your own home sure you do 
And I bet it can be hard work. And you know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. All right, and with that, I think it's time to roll into this interview with my good friend, Toby Price. Well, I'd like to welcome uh, one of my guests to the show this week, my uh, good buddy Toby Price, who I just saw here at the uh, Parker 425. Uh, I guess, uh, man, you uh, what did you say? You you had like literally one day in uh, in Australia turn around from Dakar till uh, you headed stateside, man. You got to be uh, you've been uh, been a crazy start to the year for you, buddy. Yeah, for sure, mate. It's um, definitely been a crazy start to the year. Uh, Dakar went so well for us. Uh, we, we just had a rush down there, but um, uh, we got out of there safe, uh, all of our peace, and um, yeah, like halfway through the event, we got a uh, a phone call to um, see if I wanted to compete uh, in the Parker 425 with Robert Johnson in the Chattanooga whiskey truck. So um, yeah, made a call on that. Uh, basically, once I finished Dakar, I flew home the next day straight after the event, and uh I was at home in Australia for, yeah, basically 24 hours and um, switched my bags over, did some washing and uh, flew straight here to the States. So it was uh, a wild old trip. Um, yeah, we're just kind of catching up a little bit now, but uh, other than that, it's all going really well. Yeah, do, do, it sometimes, do you kind of forget what your uh, what your house looks like in Australia? Because I've got a feeling you're, you're hardly ever there, man. Well, I, I don't even remember I've got a house in Australia. I, I keep forgetting I've even got one, so it's... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a wild time. It definitely keeps you very busy and on the road, but uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, you don't get these uh, chances and opportunities all the time, so uh, I try and grab it with both hands, hook in and go full gas and, and have some fun with it. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll talk about the Dakar Rally in a minute because I do want to dive into that and some of the talk, but uh, let's go back here a little ways. Um, I mean, you've kind of, uh, you know, it, it seems like at some point, you know, all the greats on two wheels and I mean, we can go down, go down the list of, uh, you know, off-road racers here in North America. And then, uh, you know, some of the, some of the legends of Dakar, and it seems like they always, at some point in their career transition to four wheels. And you're one of the few that's kind of active on, on both two and four wheels, man. But, uh, uh, you know, how's that kind of been? I know you, you've started picking up some more work. We've seen you in the desert here, you know, stateside and in Baja quite a bit. I know uh, you and uh, you and Nasser had uh, a pretty good run, uh, you know, we, you know, in Jesse Jones truck there at uh, at the Baja 1000. I mean, how, how's this kind of uh, I don't want to call it a transition because you're still very much on on two wheels, man. But how's the kind of the four wheel thing been going? I mean, you guys are obviously wicked fast. Yeah, look, that's it. It's uh, it's definitely keeping me very busy and on my toes. And uh, yeah, like you say, I'm very active active on both. But uh, motorcycles uh, is what's my my normal job and uh, keeps my bills paid and, uh, and and my lights on at home in Australia. And uh, I've been very lucky enough to land on my two feet uh, with, with some really good solid drives um, here in in the states. And uh, then having my own truck uh, in Australia, I get to do some events back home, the Fink Desert Racing stuff. So it's, yeah, like I'm very active in, in both uh, areas. It definitely puts a lot on the plate. And um, But then, yeah, like at, at the end of the day, the, the two wheels is main priority. It takes um, rain over everything. So if there's an event uh, that's four-wheel um, racing-wise, I, I, if there's an event on two wheels, I have to do the two-wheel side of things, which is which is fair enough. It's um, I don't want to, um, yeah, my, I don't want to retire off two wheels anytime soon. I still... I think I've got another five to eight years in um, in racing on two wheels, but uh, then again, I don't know if a drive came up on four wheels. It was just feeling like at the right time and um, could keep me going forward. Uh, then yeah, basically that, that time then might be to to hang the helmet up on two wheels. But uh, yeah, look, we had a good solid run at the Baja 1000 with NASA. It was kind of cool to have him over here in America and uh, in Mexico um, for the event and for the race and uh, to finish a second there. But that's pretty much really my best finish I've had, uh, I guess, in a trophy truck. And um, other, otherwise, yeah, I've just had some small, minor little parts and issues and things that are breaking. And um, But everyone has those at this stage. And uh, once we kind of work it all out and, and get on top of it, hopefully, yeah, we can start winning some events and uh, look to the future of um, hopefully going four wheels. And uh, that might hopefully be a, a job that I can race four, four yeah. wheels full time. 
Well, you know, it, it, I got to ask you about the Parker 425 because it, you're, you're kind of humble in what you said. You said some mechanical problems. Dude, there's an in-car video of you, and you're driving the truck by hand, like literally working the throttle with your hand. Like, <laughs> Tell me the story behind that because, I mean, th- th- that oh. takes another level of concentration to be able to do that because you're so used to your foot. I mean, I guess maybe the hand throttle, you know, used to a bike, but it's still like, dude, that, that's wild. Yeah, that's it for sure. Um, I don't know. I, there's just something in, in embedded in me that uh, I don't like giving up. I don't like quitting, and um, and I don't like letting people down. So it's uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we were running in a good position. We we're in third, trying to chase down uh, Harley Lettner in, in second, and um, everything was going really well till the third lap, and uh, we we're getting ready to push and uh, actually have a have a really good uh, solid attack and a good go at the third lap, and literally just kind of come out of. Um, out of the pit lane there and uh, got onto the, the first big main straight. Um, and, yeah, just uh, a mechanical issue with a uh, the, uh, the fly-by-wire uh, to the throttle. Uh, one of the motors locked up and it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't open the butterflies and actually, yeah, that just wouldn't give you wouldn't give you any gas. So, basically, you're trying to put your foot through the pedal and um, the, the truck's just sitting there idling. So, yeah, we uh, were sitting there just trying to think, how can we fix it? And we were just, uh, we had no spare little motor to, to switch over for the, the fly-by-wire or anything, and then um, basically, yeah, like I've seen probably in the previous few years, uh, some guys have done that, basically just made a mechanical throttle, and um, so we took the shoelace um, out of the boot and uh, wrapped it around the linkage in the throttle, disconnected all the um, the fly-by-wire stuff, so it basically made it free, and um, yeah, put the, the shoelace string through the dash, and um, yeah, tried that, and basically, yeah, it had, it had a, like a return on the on the on the butterflies and um yeah once we knew it wasn't getting going to get stuck and jammed on us and uh we thought we'll give it a go and go full gas and uh the first, yeah for sure the first 10 10 15 miles a little bit nerve-wracking because you still have that bit of a feeling that maybe it might lock on and you don't want a, a, a like a 900 horsepower trophy truck uh wedged and wide open full gas and trying to pull the thing up so uh we we're very ready for the, the main power switch and everything to switch stuff off but uh yeah it kind of works fairly fairly damn well and um uh like you say i'm, I'm kind of used to being a, a throttle in the right hand so it was uh not really too much out of uh out of place but um like i say yeah a couple of times when you needed the gas i was still finding i was trying to put my foot through the floor just to give her a bit of a bit of a hop and um yeah that still wasn't worse and you just had to try and remember it was all in the hand so uh the last lap was pretty wild but in saying that we um I think I averaged like 65 miles an hour uh, with the foot throttle on the second lap, and I only averaged uh, 63, so I dropped, I think it was two miles an hour um, in, in speed. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely not scared to have a go, mate. And that's, uh, I, I love going flat out, and um, Robert Johnson gave us that chance in, in the truck to come and race here, and I just, yeah, felt like I just didn't want to let the guy down and not finish the race, and to still come across the line fifth with the, with uh, what we had go wrong, um, being basically down and I think it was like 45 minutes trying to fix all that up, uh, yeah, we're quite stoked. We're still passing trucks and everything. Like after we, we'd stopped, a few of them had passed us, uh, 6100s and whatnot. So we're, we're making some moves with a, with a hand throttle, that was for sure. That's uh, that's insane. I, I got to think, though, you know, it's like, is some of that maybe come from, from Dakar? Because Dakar, you, you're out there in some of the remote, most remote places in the entire world, and you're all by yourself. And something mechanical goes wrong on your bike or something like that. I mean, you've got to kind of use your ingenuity to get the thing going again, right? Or you're going to be out there for a while, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. You're going to be standing out there for probably any, anywhere from five to nine hours. So it's um, going to be a little bit of a MacGyver and um, try and yeah, come up with – some wild and crazy ideas just to get you across the finish line sometimes. And uh, for sure, that's uh, another area that I guess kind of helps me a little bit um, to do some crazy and silly things. But uh, yeah, I, I nearly put that one at the top of the list. I, I never thought I'd um, have full control of a, of a 900 horsepower trophy truck in the right hand and um, trying to steer a truck for a full lap of 140 miles with one hand and still carrying that type of speed. So I'll, uh, I reckon I'll nearly be putting that one at the top of my list. Um, I guess then also, yeah, with the broken wrist uh, at Dakar last year. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, like, like I say, I just I just don't like giving up and I don't like stopping. And, um, yeah, you are, I just want to make the finish lines of, uh, of events. And as we weren't going to race, I guess I was trying to, yeah, wanted to try and break the internet doing something wild and crazy. And I think, yeah, uh, the response from it has been pretty wild here. I'm still in the States and 
um, every shop that I go to or something that they they recognise that I'm over here for the Parker race. They speak to the uh, old hand throttle uh, story and <laughs> yeah, thinking it's pretty wild and give me uh, give me some knuckles and um, said I'm pretty bad ass. So yeah, look at the end of the day, I, I just love racing, having fun and enjoying it. And uh, yeah, it's just been good times to come over here and race um, some cars and some trucks. So it's been good. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I laugh and it's funny because, uh, you know, anybody that knows you and I've got to know you pretty well. And I think most of the off-road community here in the States, I mean, we, we all know you pretty well. I feel like we've adopted you as your own or our own, you know, you, you're, you're Australian, you raced a car and, and it's for Australia, but all of us kind of lay, <laughs> lay, lay a claim to Toby Price is you're, you're kind of half American, buddy. Yeah, mate. I'm very, very um, blessed and playing pumped with that. It's, uh, yeah, I get the kind of like the what they call the honorary uh, off road status. I guess it's uh, being a being American citizen and off road. And um, yeah, look, uh, it's it's kind of cool. It's it's crazy to see the, the following that I do have here in America, even though I am Australian. But um, yeah, it's cool the support here and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I, I just think people just love it there. We uh, we hope we have a go at everything we can and um, and and keep moving forward and. Trying to just chase uh, everything that we can can get our hands on to. So it's uh, no, I'm I'm very lucky to have that that, that support here in America and uh, have great people that follow and um, yeah keep up to date with what we're up to. So we just have to uh, yeah try and keep at it full gas and um, doing wild and crazy things and try and win some events, mate. We'll be we'll be stoked. Yeah. Well, you know, and let's go back and talk. We haven't even really talked about this year's Dakar Rally, but. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously you're, you're a multi-time winner of the Dakar Rally. You know what it takes to win that event, but, uh, you know, you're with one of the best teams in the world. You go into this event and you guys are expecting to win, but, you know, once again, it is Dakar and it is the hardest event, uh, you know, in the world to win. I mean, you know, going into one of these things, it's, it's, I mean, how, you know, I don't even know if I can put it into perspective. I've never raced it, you know, and I, I've raced in Baja plenty, but I mean, kind of draw some comparisons. How hard is it not only to to win this event, Toby, but just just to finish the Dakar Rally. Man, that, that's exactly how you explain it. It's uh, it, it's a hard old challenge, and it, uh, just to make the finish line that that in itself is a win to anybody, really. So to do that, um, that that's the uh, the first thing you're trying to to knock off the list and and get sorted and just come home safe. And um, yeah, to be able to try and win it two times, but uh, in a way, like look. You, you've got to work hard for things. You've got to put a lot of time and effort into to like the writing and, and bits and pieces like that to make it all go go to plan. But then in saying that, also you you really do have to have a lot of luck and a lot of things fall your way and and go the right direction for you there. And uh, yeah, it's just yeah trying to piece it all together and just make a good uh, game plan and a strategy of um, of racing. And and sometimes you can have absolutely everything perfect and in the right direction, but. Basically, there could be a guy that's starting back in 25th that gets between a guy that you're battling with in, in the lead and he's not even really in contention to try and win. But uh, it can help you or it can hinder you uh, with, with your overall results. So if he you, you gets in between a guy that you're battling with, um, that just gives the, the guy uh, more room to try and catch you or, uh, or for you to catch them. So it's... Uh, a lot of things have just got to fall in the right place and, and right direction for you. And, uh, yeah, to, to say I've got, I've got two trophies at, sitting at home, um, I never thought I'd even have one of the things. It's just uh, the, the the mountain you've got to climb to try and win that race. It's just uh, – it, it, it seems unachievable. And, um, yeah, when you do it, it, it seems like a dream and it just doesn't feel like it actually kind of happened. But, uh, it's yeah, it's just like basically riding from the East Coast to the West Coast and, uh, and trying to do it all in – yeah, ten or twelve days. So it's uh, it's a it's a wild old ride, and um, it's definitely a challenge. It uh, I don't know for some reason just keeps drawing us back, and it's self inflicted pain and torture really. So it's uh, but yeah, we enjoy it, we love it, and um, yeah, we're always trying to line up at that race and uh, try and chase that number one place. Well, you know, and what I think is interesting about that rally too, especially for a guy like you that that does it on a bike. I mean, you know. I, I don't want to say it's any easier for guys in four wheels, but it's easier. I mean, I'll, I'll just go out and say it. I mean, you know, they, they can at least at some point kind of sit back in their seat on a stretch and, and take a little bit of a deep breath. I mean, you on a bike, I mean, it, it's just a split second and your your rally can be over. And at least I, I feel like the car and tr- truck guys, they, they've got a little bit of a chance to catch their breath and collect their thoughts. I feel like on a bike, that's got to be so intense because you've got to be 
one hundred percent on and you know and, and focused and you know how hard is that over the stretch of two weeks to keep that focus because you know unlike the car and truck guys where you can you, they can literally you know kind of take a breath you can't do that Toby. Yeah, exactly. That's it. It's uh, not taking anything away from the guys that drive the cars like uh, Nasser and and uh, Carlos Sainz and all them guys that they they travel at a really high rate of speed too. And it's like there, there's a lot of concentration in that, but. Uh, yeah, like you say, it's just uh, there's there are sections there that they can kind of relax a lot more and just uh, sit there and kind of enjoy the ride and, and still be wide open on the throttle. But like for us, uh, we're trying to we're there by ourselves. We're trying to navigate. We're trying to ride the bike at speeds of yeah ninety to hundred and twenty mile an hour. I think that's roughly around the yeah, hundred to one hundred and sixty kilometers um, an hour in in, in uh, Australian course basically, but. Uh, yeah, you, you, we're trying to do everything. And like I say, we, we, we have to be the mechanic, we have to be the rider, we have to be the navigator, we have to be basically, yeah, fit and fine, tuned, ready for the race. And, um, yeah, we don't have any outside assistance or help. So uh, it just, it all adds up and just, uh, yeah, not, to, not to take anything away from them guys that drive the cars, it's just, uh, it's it's definitely a whole different world to, to be a motorcycle competitor in that race. And um, we have to do every bit of miles on the seat and, um yeah, just to try and mentally prepare yourself for something like that. It just it really it really weighs you down. Um, it's a race that's basically designed to try and break man and machine. And um, yeah, if you you come out the other side of it uh, all in one piece and uh, with a trophy in your hand, um, that's that's an ultimate dream. But uh, just to even finish that race in the last place, it's still that's still a win at the end of the day too. Yeah. How was it this year? Because this was, you know, you've raced in South America for quite a while now, and, and obviously it's different every single year, but you've kind of come to know what to expect. How was going to Saudi Arabia this year? I mean, that was complete shift for everybody. I mean, it was almost even playing field for everybody. You know, how was that shift for, for, for not only you, but the team and, and just everybody in general? Because it's new country, you know, it's new terrain. Everything was new about this year's rally. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It was a complete different rally for us and no one knew what to expect. No one knew the area that we were going through. No one knew boy, how the people operated there. And, um, just, yeah, it just everything was a completely different rally for us. So uh, some of the areas we rode through actually felt like we were in South America. But then on top of that, it was, yeah, we just knew we were in a completely different race and uh, a different country. But like... Uh, yeah, the, the KDM team, we, we try to do as much research as possible to be as prepared as we could be. But, um, yeah, like I say, you just, like, you've just got to have a lot of luck go your way with that race sometimes and uh, and, and try and just piece everything together and, and make it all work. But uh, it was it was definitely a, a cool experience. At the end of the day, I, I've raced in uh, South America since uh, my first one was 2015. Um, and, yeah, like it was, it was, it was cool to back actually be in a different country for it and it was kind of like a new really style of race i guess and uh kind of got you excited to go somewhere new somewhere different and uh experience uh, another country so yeah we, we're, we're there for the next four years now so uh we kind of know roughly what we're in for and basically we'll just yeah go back to the drawing board and start getting ready for 2021 it just it never it never ends and nothing slows down for us it, just uh, non-stop thinking about that car racing and uh, that's about it yeah well you know that being said uh, you know what, what's the plans for this year obviously you said getting ready for the 2021 uh, Dakar rally I know uh, obviously you got the fink there in Australia you said you, you own your own truck down there I know I saw stadium super trucks is coming down there with a with a handful of races as well I'm sure we might see a state side I mean what's uh, I'm sure you've got a lot of opportunities popping up uh, in front of you what's uh, what's 2020 look like for Toby Price yeah, exactly all that pretty much. We've um we've got some things lined up, yeah, with uh basically doing the world championship uh on two wheels. Uh we're trying to line up the thing to do Sink Desert Race with two wheels as well as as the four wheels uh program we got there. Uh yeah, we do some stadium super truck racing this year in Australia. Um hopefully we can come back and do some more events in the trophy truck stuff here, either with Jesse Jones or uh or Robert Johnson. Um, uh, basically, yeah, trying basically the plan is to get back to the Baja 1000 at the end of the year in November. Um, it would be cool to try and either win that race or get back on the podium there again um, after this year or like, after last year now. But uh, and then basically, yeah, we just try and um, fit in anything else we can kind of fit in along the way. So it's um, 
plenty of racing on, on board and, um, yeah, two and four wheels. And, yeah, we just like to go out and have fun and, and uh, enjoy uh, going at high, high rates of speed. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll see and uh, assess everything as it's going along. And um, I don't know, I seem to... I seem to struggle to say no to a lot of things. It's just uh, something gets offered, and I'm like, yep, done. We'll sort it out, and we'll go for it full gas. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to try, try and come over with uh, Can-Am to do maybe a the World Championship UTV um, races over here. So, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll wait and see what we can kind of piece together and um, try and, uh, yeah, just keep myself uh, active and flying around the world doing uh, doing some mad cool events. Yeah, well, and you mentioned uh, you know the UTV there and the side by sides, and I got to say, you know, I, you know, here I am a trophy truck guy, kind of racing full time in in side by sides now. But I know even in, in, in Dakar, you know, a couple of years ago, it was kind of an afterthought, like that was just a category nobody paid much attention to. Now, I mean, we've got some marquee racers, you know, in there, and it's really kind of coming to the forefront of Dakar, where you know manufacturers are getting involved, things like that. You mentioned, you know, doing some side by side racing. I know you've got, you know, you do some down in Australia. You're talking about coming here and doing the World Championship. I mean, for a guy like you you know that's saying something i mean you you know you're running you know with one of the best programs in the entire world on two wheels you got some amazing opportunities on four and here you are talking about going side by side racing man how 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 much fun are you having behind the wheel of one yeah look honestly it's um for, for how much slack they they cop uh oh what basically i'd say three four years ago or five years ago um yeah honestly like it's uh it's kind of it's good cheap not cheap, affordable racing, but it's a, it's a lot more achievable than what you're trying to run a full fledged uh, trophy truck kind of thing with with a team. There, it just uh, the budget pretty much goes ten times as much as what you do you can put into a side by side. Like it's 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 as deep as your pocket can go to go and run a side by side. But uh, in 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 any, any way, it's basically it any seat time helps, and that's like uh, if I can get my seat um, my backside into one of those seats of a, a side by side, I I do it. It's uh, Somewhere along the way, it's going to help uh, refine driving in a trophy truck or whether I go a bit of tarmac racing or um, in, in the stadium super truck stuff. So, uh, yeah, look, it's um, it's only, like it's a category fairly new to the Dakar event, but now you're starting to see, like, Cyril Debray and everything racing in one this year. And uh, it, 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 it's crazy. Like I say, it's it's, uh, it's affordable, uh, closer and affordable racing for uh, the majority of the people are running around instead of trying to uh, like a multi-million dollar deal to, to try and go and run a, a full-size trophy truck or a or a, uh, a like a Toyota or one of those minis in in the Dakar race so it's um yeah the, the, that's all it's all really taking off massive and like you say if everyone here in America now seems to have one like yeah uh, everywhere you turn around it's um if someone doesn't have one it's either a, a mate that's got one that they go out and and, and blast down through Glamis and have a, have a bit of fun there and I'm doing a side-by-side side championship races at home with Can-Am and doing one or two rounds. Uh, I can't commit to a full season there just with the, the two-wheel program that I'm doing. But, um, yeah, I, I take my, my Can-Am out to the St. Desert Race and do some pre-running there. And it, they're just a really, really fun toy to have. And, it's um, yeah, it's any, any bit of racing I can get into, I, I go with it full gas. Yeah, well, I got to ask one last question before we let you go, though. I know uh, King of the Hammers coming up. Uh, you know, obviously there's UTVs there. They got King of the Motos coming back. I mean, uh, has there ever been any itch to go and try your hand in the rocks? Uh, don't, uh, I was really, really close to trying to pull the trigger on that and, and going there this weekend. But uh, like I say, I haven't pre- I haven't been home for uh, about four weeks. So I, 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 well, I got home for one day for 24 hours, but uh I've got a lot of things to sort out back home and uh, get on top of. And I was, in, like I say, I was like 99% close to uh, changing my flight uh, <laughs> to fly home. So I, I head home on Saturday and um, and get out of here. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I, I was nearly going to stay and just at least go and watch and check the event out to basically try and maybe, like, uh, I'm either going to race or um, see if I could line something up or just maybe they're planning for the future to come over and race it. But, uh these things don't match up at the moment. Um, got to get my uh, got to get myself home and sort some things out and go from there. But it's definitely uh, one that I've always wanted to come over and check out. It's just uh, yeah, the hammers is just everyone talks about it. It's basically like um, a motorhome city um, <laughs> that's out in the middle of nowhere, and it's uh, it's, it's really cool just to see that amount of people are just that fully froth off road racing and um, rock climbing and doing whatever so it's uh it's cool to see how big the racing is here and i love coming over and seeing everyone uh hook in and go full gas so uh we'll hopefully we'll get to that event eventually one year 
Yeah. Well, and uh, like I said, one more question. Got one more, but uh, that kind of spurred <laughs> me into saying one other thing. But I know obviously you and Red Bull have a, a very, very deep relationship, been a huge support of your career. Obviously, they've got a big uh, footprint at the Dakar Rally. What, uh, uh, you got to be pretty excited about this new Red Bull Junior program they've got. I know we've got, uh, you know, Seth Contero, Mitch Guthrie, Blade Hildebrand kind of in that program. But uh, you, you got to be kind of excited about, you know, them kind of investing in some of the young and up and coming athletes, you know, and, and giving them a pathway to Dakar because, you know, you and I both know it's very expensive to compete there at a, at a high level, and uh, you know, and, and just the logistics of, of being a part of that event's tough. I mean, you you as an athlete and, and one of the premier Red Bull athletes, got to be really excited about their investment into this kind of junior program they've got. Yeah, for sure. Look, like it's uh, it's it's unreal to see Red Bull um, jumping in on, on board with that and, and really trying to bring uh, some younger drivers through and develop them up into yeah professional drivers for the Dakar racing and. Um, yeah, it def- the sport definitely needs it. Like, it's, I'm not saying that uh, Stefan Peter Hansel and uh, Carlos Sainz and all them guys, uh, like, yeah, uh, ab- about to retire and hang the helmet up. Like, those still- those guys have still got some a few more years in them racing, but um, they are getting towards that age. It's just getting up there and um, out of the way. I, I definitely, uh, yeah, uh, I'd love to be a part of that that junior program that's in that. But from I'm still probably a little bit old for it as well. So it's, uh, but it's it, it's cool to see Red Bull really been investing into this and. And trying to yeah bring some younger drivers up and uh, and be a part of this uh, Dakar racing. So we uh, yeah hopefully we'll see them guys back over there again uh, next year and, and and going full gas because they 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 had a lot of issues and things going wrong. Um, so like I said that, that that program got put together fairly quickly um, and still the car is very new and under development and uh, they had a lot of, well, I guess a lot of issues this year and. Uh, but they, like I say, it's the boys show that they can actually run at the front. They were winning class, uh, winning stages, and showing them they can actually do it. So it's um, no, it's amazing to see, and I hope that. Well, Toby, um, yeah. you know. I uh, I appreciate you taking the time, my friend. I know uh, you're you're you know kind of busy uh, getting ready to hop a flight back to you back home, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to call on the show. Good seeing you out here at the 425, man. Always uh, always fun catching up with you. Mate, no problem at all. Appreciate it, and thank you very much. We'll uh, hopefully see you guys out here again soon. Man, oh man, does Mr. Toby Price not disappoint? Always fun catching up with him. You never know what he's going to be up to, and uh, you know he's got a lot ahead of him. Uh, but speaking of ahead of us, man, we got the Super Bowl this weekend. That is what's ahead of us. And chiming in on all things Super Bowl, I'm going to roll to a little interview I did with my good friend Dave Mason with Bet Online. Well, I'd like to welcome uh, what's becoming a regular guest here on Project Action on Podcast One, my good friend Dave Mason with betonline.ag. And uh, Dave, I know we're coming off, um, I guess, a, a crazy MMA fight. You guys actually had some bets on the Royal Rumble, but uh, I want to talk, uh, before we jump into Super Bowl, this massive week of Super Bowl, I got to tell you, I, I kind of bragged a little bit last time I had you on air, and uh, I think karma came to bite me in the ass a little bit because I was bragging that I I, I won some money on the Vikings and Saints and then turned around and uh, Cowboy, uh, he was done in about 30 seconds, I believe, in the UFC fight. And uh, I got to tell you, you took I think you took your money back from me on that one. Yeah, we took a lot of money back on that fight. That, that was a great result for us. The public was on Cowboy plus money. As they usually are in big fights like that, when the fighters getting you know around that plus three hundred and higher range, you know that it takes all those public betters are on the the uh, underdog, and we're usually room for the favorite. So uh, it was a good night. It was a good night for us for the UFC betting. Yeah, well, you know that you know anytime McGregor's fighting, it's a big big thing for. Uh... Uh, you know, just for the sports world in general, but definitely for betonline.ag, you know, but so that happens and then fast forward a couple of weeks and now we've got the biggest one. I mean, the Super Bowl, uh, things got to be a little bit nutty on your guys end right now. Yeah, my coworker just hit me up for a few seconds ago saying he's exhausted. So it, it's, it's yeah, it, it's crazy, man. We got so much stuff going on, props going up, campaigns going out. Um, it's, it's, it's a fun week, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, I love football. I'm a football junkie, but I'm not going to lie, man. Come, come post Super Bowl. And it's nice to catch our breath and, you know, take, a lot of people take a week off here and there or whatever, but, uh, it, it's a fun week. I love it. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm laughing too, cause we're going to get into actually talking about the game, 
but you and I, uh, we follow each other on Twitter, and you posted something, and I was like, I, I gotta, I, I gotta ask Dave on this. The prop bets, I think, around the Super Bowl are some of the most fun I think I've ever seen in sports. I mean, you posted something about side boobs. So I'm looking in here, and uh, you guys have prop belts for uh, for cleavage, and I mean wardrobe malfunctions, and you know, and obviously things like coin toss and things like that. But uh, you know, color of the liquid poured on the winning head coach. I mean, you guys, you, you got to have a little bit of fun with this, I think, over there. Absolutely. Hey, you got to be have a little bit of a sick mind. You got to be a little crazy, and that's what a lot of people in our industry are. To tell you the truth, and I don't know if I'm putting the best use of my college degree when I'm thinking of side boob and cleavage props. So it is what it is. But uh, yeah, you know, you just you start getting wacky, and uh, you know, a lot of this is PR driven. You know, I, I come from a PR background. I'm more of the marketing side of things rather than the odd side of things. So. You know, I'm just always thinking of ways to get our name out there, and that's what a lot of this is. You know, these wacky props aren't to make a lot of money. Um, hope you, hopefully, you break even on them. But uh, you know, you it gets it gets in, in the headlines, it gets you on know, websites and podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, we have a good team that comes up with wacky stuff and some uh, get our name out there. Well, you know, and I think, uh, you know, that being said, you know, we've got the fun prop bets and, and, you know, I, I think people go and, you know, like you said, it, it's something that uh, you have some fun with, but, you know, in all seriousness, I mean, this, this football game that we've got shaping up, I mean, I'm looking, you got uh, what San Francisco at plus one Oh five. I think Kansas city, uh, the favorite at uh minus one twenty five. but, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty damn close, Dave. I mean, this is, this is almost one oh, of yeah. those where I, I, you know, it's, there's no real favorite here. I mean, obviously Kansas city favored a little bit, but uh, I think it makes betting on this game very, very interesting, you know, and I think it's really a lot of reading between the lines and finding other things to bet on within the game. Right. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the action is great. It's, 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 it's one of those spreads where you you know, you got a, a minus one point favorite, and then, you know, so that's so close to So there's still a money line involved, but the money line is so tight, too. So what we're seeing is people who are betting the spread are betting Kansas City. However, money line bettors are on the 49ers. So it's almost a wash. You know, it's almost, uh, you know, it's as of now, there's not a huge decision. When, there's a huge decision on each separately, but when you combine them, you know, it, it's 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 not a huge decision. The huge decision right now is on the total. I mean, that's going to be uh, that's going to be a whopper. I mean, eighty six percent of the early actions on the over right now. Um, you know, so we're holding off on and raising that. We might. Uh, we have a feeling the sharps will start hitting the under if we do raise it too much, uh, up to fifty four and a half or fifty five. So we're kind of holding off, and I think the sharps are too. Not a lot of sharp action right yet, but uh, yeah, it, it, the action's awesome. It's just it's so it's so interesting to watch how the, you know the, the spread. There's so much action on spread for the Kansas City, but on the flip side, San Francisco. So um, it's gonna be interesting. If it late, if it, if it hits on that one, it'll be very interesting. But uh, no, the action's great. Yeah, you know, I'm just looking at it, you know, and it's I, I got to think, you know, and, and how much between, uh, you know, now when, you know, we're recording this on a Tuesday, we've got the game this Sunday, you know, how much changes? I mean, you guys, the team there at betonline.ag, you guys, every single news article that comes out, every story, I mean, you guys got to be combing the internet and, you know, and, and, the, and the news cycles right now just for, for every bit of information, right? I mean, this has got to be all hands on deck week for you guys. Yeah, it's it's actually you know for, for the it's it's a lot of work for the props guys. Those guys are really up against the wall. You know, we have two kind of different departments. There's guys that handle the props, and there's the guys that handle the, uh, the 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 pregame stuff, right? The spread, total money line teasers, parlays, etc. So for the props guys, it's it's hectic as all hell, especially since a lot of these props are so wacky, and there's going to be information on you know national anthem length and this and that and the other things. So for those guys, that they're up against it. For the other guys, though, I mean, it, it's it's probably the easiest week it came of the year, even though there's so much action on it. I mean, it's one game. They're booking one game. Um, it, it's a very public line. I mean, it, it's it's not that, you know, it, it's not like you're posting 16 games and there's going to be uh, spots for, for the better, for the sharp guys to pick you off or even like a, the worst is, I mean, like college, college Saturdays for basketball and or football. I mean, those, those are when you – these guys are pulling their hair out, but so actually the Super Bowl for the pregame guys, the spread total money line kind of guys, it's it's quite easy actually. Yeah. 
Well, you know, and I, I got to ask you this because I know, uh, you know, big news in the sports world. And, uh, you know, I, I listen to a lot of sports radio and podcasting, you know, aside from, uh, you know, myself doing it. But uh, you're a sports guy. You and I have got to know each other over the years, but, uh, or, you know, over the past couple of years. But, uh, you know, this whole thing, I mean, we had a, a week out from Super Bowl, you know, out of the NBA. I mean, Kobe Bryant passing away. I mean, you know, you as a sports fan, Dave, I mean, that, that's that's got to be a pretty, pretty heavy hit on, on just, I think, all of us in general, right? Hey. It was. I mean, you know, Sunday I logged on to do some work, you know, busy. I have all sorts of stuff going through. Well, I didn't get anything done su- Sunday. I, I just was watching that TV all day and just in shock. And, you know, I'm I'm a Philly guy, and that's where he spent a, his high school years. And I actually saw him play back in high school. So I always had that kind of, you know, even though he didn't know who the hell I was, you know, I, yeah. I always kind of felt like I had that connection with him, you know. And he, he's just uh, – you respect the hell out of the player he was and the winner and all the stories and, and uh, just, just, just incredible. And it puts a lot of stuff in perspective, you know? So it, it and that's one thing, you know, it, it just puts so much stuff in perspective, how fleeting life is and uh, you know, and, and how many, you know, even though we're talking about the Super Bowl and everything and it, you know, it's important, it's great, it's a huge event, but it's still, it just puts everything in perspective. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely does. Well, you know, I guess a little forward looking here. We got Super Bowl this weekend, and then I know I'm a big auto racing guy. Uh, turn around, what two weeks out from uh, the Daytona 500? So I know uh, you guys be taking bets on, uh, I, I guess, on the biggest uh, NASCAR race of the year as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that that we always get good action on Daytona. Um, and yeah, some good fights coming up. I know you're a fight guy. John Jones is coming up. Uh, yeah. Fury Wilder rematch is coming up. So. You know, football ends, and you know, you, we, you we lose a lot of seasonal betters until next late August. But you know, there's still so much to bet on and so much to get in. Plus XFL, man, let's let's do it. <laughs> we'll see. Sure, hopefully XFL is successful because we would love some like uh, springtime football action. We'll yeah. see. Fingers are crossed. Yeah, is, is that a prop bet? Will the XFL last longer than one season? I mean, uh, you know, yeah, right. is, is that is that one you guys are going to throw out there? I, I think that's a good idea, especially after last year. What, what was that league last year? That's my fear. I remember. Oh. I remember the first. What was that league last year? Uh, I can't, it's sad first, that we can't even think about the. We we know yeah. what we're talking about. We don't know the name of it. That's how. Yeah, I mean, it, they started like gangbusters. Everybody is loving it, and there's some big hits. And this is what football's all about. The action was great with us, and it lasted about two weeks. And then it just like every week, it just it just petered out. And it's like oh, they didn't even make it the whole damn season. So hopefully, yeah. XFL is better. I think they got more money involved, so I'm, I'm sure it'll last one season. But we'll see. Yeah. Well, Dave, it's always fun having you on the show, my friend. Uh, you know, thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, I know I will uh, – I haven't quite decided how I'm going to spread my money around with this Super Bowl. Maybe I'll play some prop bets here because I, I really – I don't think there's definitive uh, between Kansas City and 49ers in my mind. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have some fun with some prop bets this weekend. There you go. Everybody else is donating. If you're not betting the coin toss, you don't have a heartbeat. Everybody bets the coin toss. you got to pick a side. Absolutely. Uh, Well, I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you, my friend, and uh, we'll definitely chat again soon. And that is all she wrote this week for uh, Project Action here on Podcast One. Thanks to Toby Price, Dave Mason for uh, chiming in and uh, calling into the show. Always fun catching up with those guys. Once again, Go over to Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button. We're also now on Spotify, so you can get us there. Um, But, uh, yeah, please do that. Give me a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. Uh, Much appreciated for all of you who uh, continue to – uh, to do that. And, uh, you know, if you like this show, we got a whole lot of stuff coming up on, uh, on pro- you know, I said on Project Action Sportsnet, on Podcast One Sportsnet. And we want to make sure you are ready for the action. For the NFL and sports coverage, you need to make sure and check out the Dan Patrick Show, the Rich Eisen Show, Ross Tucker's Football Podcast, and the rest of the Podcast One Sportsnet. We got the biggest guests, the best commentary, and everything in between. Be sure to subscribe to these shows and more on Podcast One, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast apps so you can get new episodes every single week. All right, thank you guys for the support of the show. Uh, I am going out to King of the Hammers, actually. I am on my way to King of the Hammers. Uh, So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be out uh, with 50,000 of my favorite friends out in the middle of nowhere, California desert, watching the most extreme off-road race on the planet. That's what's ahead of me. I'm sure the rest of you got Super Bowl on your minds. Don't forget, 
you know, go over there to Bet Online, use that promo code Podcast One, get you a fifty percent sign up bonus. Thanks to Geico for the continued support of the show. And you know what? I think I'm out of here. Off to Hammertown.